Hi everyone, this is Marianne, and welcome to my channel. A few weeks ago, my good friend Mona alerted me to the fact that there is a set of Jin Hao 82 fountain pens that are translucent. She sent me the link, and so of course, of course, I had to have them because even though they were slightly more expensive than my previously purchased Jin Hao 82s, they are still super cheap, like 300 something pesos. I will leave a link to purchase in the description box. And so I went ahead and ordered. Take note that supply of these is iffy for some reason and some colors are out of stock and then they come back in stock and then they go out of stock again. And on two different occasions for two different colored pens, the seller actually canceled because they had issues with sourcing. But finally one got delivered and it's right here and this is the box that it comes in and it is the color called ginger it is a shade of yellow that is slightly greenish this is definitely not a yellow yellow like your mongol pencil yellow or your post-it yellow this is not that kind of yellow and the translucence of the pen is very very slight but it is still noticeable it definitely does not look like a solid colored pen it is translucent and here it is together with a cream colored Jin Hao 82 that's a solid color the cream has a silver clip and a silver trim but this also comes in a version with gold instead of silver I just picked the silver the ginger however comes with a gold trim and a gold clip and I actually did not see any option to choose silver instead of gold. The nibs are also of different colors. These are both fine and the ginger has a gold detail on the nib while the cream Jin Hao has none. The, the cream has just the silver nib. Okay, now the hardest part for me really is to choose an ink to use in the Jin Hao 82 Ginger. I'm going through my ink swatch book. I made this myself. I have a video about how I made this and I will link it down below. And like I said in a previous video, I do tend to match the color of the pen to the color of the ink I will be using to fill it with, but that is not a hard and fast rule. It does not have to match, not at all, but it's a fun challenge to take on. Okay, so here are the inks I am considering. Noodler's Walnut, Ferris Wheel Press Oyster Hour, Ferris Wheel Press Treasured Manuscript, and the Roarer and Klinger Alt Goldgren. Now Alt Goldgren is a good color match. As you can see, the, the, the color is close to the color of the pen. But the problem is, it is not that far from Diamine Salamander, which I am already using, which you can also see in my tracking sheet for pens and inks in use. And I prefer to use inks that are not close to each other in color so that I can tell in a glance that I am using a different ink. Granted, Salamander is a much darker ink than Alt Goldgren, and it's also much greener than Alt Goldgren, but they're close enough to potentially look similar in the handwriting. Another reason why I cannot use Alt Goldgren is because it is also similar to Autumn Forest, which I am already using with my Olive Jin Hao 82 that I just recently unboxed and filled. The link to that video will be down below. But Noodler's Walnut is nice. This is a warm reddish brown and I think this would be a nice contrasting color to the ginger pen. But I feel like the treasured manuscript looks nothing like any ink I'm already using and it's close in color to the ginger and it's also a yellow that is very slightly greenish but my doubts with this ink is that it could be too light. Bookkeeper's Brass is another ink that I am I considered using with the ginger pen but I did pick treasured manuscript in the end because it is closest in color to the ginger
I have the vial right here and I first tested out the nib of the pen, tried to see if it writes without a problem by dipping the nib into the ink and writing with that without filling the pen itself with ink. And my doubts were proven to be true. I saw that the ink was too light. It's too light, it will not be readable. And I also tried out the same ink, but with a dip pen. This is the Zebra G nib in a nib holder from Tachikawa. I also have an unboxing and first impressions video about this nib and nib holder, which I will link down below. Usually, light colored inks that look too light with fountain pens look darker with dip pens because more ink is laid down by dip pens usually. But still, this looks too light, way too light. I cannot use treasured manuscript. So I cleaned the ginger pen under some running water in the bathroom to clear it of the treasured manuscript that's left over on the nib and part of the feed. And that's when I saw that even the little sleeve inside that's connected to the section is also made of gold compared with the silver that's on my other gin house as you can see here. I tried out the ginger pen with Noodler's Walnut and of course the ink writes dark and beautiful and there is no problem at all with the nib. I went ahead and filled the pen like normal and I was finally able to place a handwriting sample on that ink swatch card for Noodler's Walnut. And then I also made an entry for the Jin Hao 82 Ginger and Noodler's Walnut combination in my tracking sheet for pens and inks in use. I do like this ginger. I like the color. I, I like the translucence of it. It looks so pretty. And I like the Jin Hao 82 fountain pen in general because it's small, short, and it has flat ends. And all of the Jin Hao 82s I have write smoothly and they don't seem to dry out if I don't write with them for a day or two or three, unlike the Pilot Metropolitan, which uh, dries up if I don't use it for a few days. It doesn't happen with the Jin Hao 82s. And even with the Jin Hao 992s for that matter, I have never observed those drying up if I don't use the pens for several days. And the best thing of all, the Jin Hao 82 is super cheap. 300 pesos, 400 pesos for a fountain pen that looks this nice and performs decently. I have no complaints. And that is my video for you today. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Bye.